Hello friends, Ben Ochart here. Thank you so much for tuning in. A while back I released a video about uh, the kind of disasters that can occur after a water change. You can see the uh, thumbnail of the video here. And uh, in that video I talked about how sometimes you can get a sudden death or a uh, uh, fish acting erratically and clamping their fins, being inactive, and uh, in some cases just flat out dying on you after a water change. What I, um, you know, I talked about the different things that can lead up to that and some of the mistakes that can be made, you know, that one can make in the water change that can result in that. But I didn't really cover what to do if it does happen. One of you asked a question, you, you commented under that video and mentioned that uh, you had had that occur to you and now what do I do, right? I've lost a fish, the other fish are acting um, odd, uh, you know, what, what steps can I take? So in this video what I want to talk with you about is what you can do in the event that you notice erratic behavior, something unusual after a water change. Let's go ahead and get into it. Chances are, if you did a water change and immediately after the water change you noticed some very unusual activity. The fish are, are gasping, they're working their mouths more than they would normally. They're, um, they have their, their fins are clamped, they're hanging out in the corner, they're not responding to you the way they would normally. Maybe they're colored down, uh, maybe they're hanging around the top uh, and gasping. Th these, these are all very, very bad signs. Now. Flashing, uh, you know, rubbing themselves against a rock or the substrate, let's say, or um, uh, going into breeding uh, type of coloration, right, where they fire up or, uh, and start maybe doing a breeding dance with other fish, things like that. that. That's actually a bit normal after a water change, right? They get kind of fired up, that kind of thing. So that's not something to worry about. The kind of signs I'm, I'm talking about are the fish uh, really starts to act unusual and in a negative way. Uh, hanging out the bottom, hanging out in the corner, um, hiding and, uh, and really just different from how they would normally act. And then certainly when you go to feed them after that water change, they're not interested in food where normally they would be very voracious. You have a problem, there's a problem, it needs action. And so um, under those circumstances you can be pretty sure that something was wrong. Either you shocked them with a big change in pH, which is more likely in a smaller aquarium uh, with a large water change. So let's say a 29 gallon, you do a 90%, 80% water change, and the pH is very different. You haven't done a water change in a long time. You have aragonite. You've been slowly rising the pH. And it's very different from your tap water. You're going to shock those fish. Let's say uh, you forgot to match the temperature of your faucet. Uh, you know, you went, you went right from faucet to tank, you didn't match the temperature, or you outright forgot to condition the water. Uh, in, in any of those cases, you can actually have a, a bit of a shock. Maybe uh, you had the worst case scenario, you didn't condition the water, and uh, your local water uh, processing uh, facility, right, your water plant was using an extra amount of chlorine or chloramine because of storms or runoff or something. And uh, so you've just hit your fish with a ton of, of chlorine or chloramine, which contains ammonia, and this has put them into a severe situation. So, no time to guess, no time to think. Um, I, if I saw that kind of behavior after a water change, I wouldn't even test the water, to tell you the truth. You can if you want, but what I would do immediately is hit the tank with a uh, bigger dose, maybe even a double dose of conditioner, uh, whether it's Prime, uh, Seachem Prime, or uh, Fritz Complete, or whatever it is that you're using, right, Seachem Safe, I would, I would give it a good dose of that, and uh, maybe even consider uh, another water change, and um, you know, depending on after hitting it with conditioner, waiting an hour, and then doing a test and see what I got, and uh, if I notice something that warrants a water change, I would go ahead and do it. But uh, certainly hitting it really hard, uh, with something like that, watching it closely, and um, even taking the temperature that I that I that I move the temperature, let's say in an upward direction, and now there's not enough oxygen 
uh, in the water, but simply add a bubbler so there's more oxygen in the water. Uh, so there's, you know, you got to act quickly on this kind of thing. You can't just sit around and observe it for 24 hours. In 24 hours, the fish will be dead. So um, you do a water change, you suspect you've shocked the fish, hit the tank with some conditioner right away. If you have it, uh, grab some media from an established tank, maybe grab some uh, beneficial bacteria in a bottle like Fritzzyme 7 or maybe even a Seachem Stability. Hit the tank with some of that. And uh, because you may have done a bacteria kill off for some reason, you might have killed off some bacteria. And now the ammonia that your fish are producing is not being uh, converted into nitrite and then ultimately into the less harmless nitrate. And so again, you need to move quickly, condition the tank, add bacteria. And me personally, I would hit the tank with conditioner probably several days in a row. And I would hit it with a good dose of uh, beneficial bacteria or add some media from an established tank. And then after I've taken those steps, I would go ahead and uh, perhaps do some, some uh, uh, you know, do some testing and see where I'm at and uh, because I'll tell you uh, you know you know you probably you probably have an ammonia spike of some kind you probably shock them with a change in pH or a change in temperature now all of that being said depending on the hardiness of your fish you might still lose your fish and so what I'm giving you here are anecdotal uh, suggestions that may or may not work for you just realize that uh, depending on the level of shock and the sensitivity of your particular fish and the kind of shape they were in before the water change, you might lose those fish anyway. Or on the other side of the coin, if they're very hardy and were very, very healthy before the mistake, they may actually weather it fine and come out of it on the other end. But in conclusion, in closing, if you see bad signs not flashing and, and breeding behavior. Those are good signs, right? Bad signs. Gasping, hanging out the bottom, hanging out at the top for air, working their mouths too much, clamped fins, hiding, not reacting to feeding, not being interested in food, things of this nature. Take action quickly, right? Hit the tank with some good conditioner. Maybe check out the temperature, see what's going on. Something happened mismatched temperature, you shocked it with pH, things of this nature. If you haven't done a water change for a long time, your pH between faucet and tank may have shifted, right? So I, I suggest you do a slower filling up of the tank. Match temperature, I, I use a python, match the temperature at the faucet, and then slowly fill the tank, almost a trickle. It'll take a long time, and you'll have to be paying attention, but as opposed to a very high-speed fill, and the fish are just go from one, one extreme to the other, and they end up dying on you from, from the shock, okay? And a slow fill of a tank on, on, a, uh, on a water change isn't a bad idea under any circumstances, probably just for acclimation purposes, and even more severe in the smaller tanks where um, it's just a it's just a greater percentage of, uh, of water that's being swapped out. Okay, at any rate, those are my two cents. Comment below what you think and uh, love to hear what you have to say. We always learn from each other around here, right? That's one of the models of the channel. And I hope to see you on Saturday for the Cichlids and Coffee live stream. And uh, if you like the channel, be sure to subscribe, hit the bell, and that thumbs up. It is appreciated. All right, so uh, what do you guys think? Does it make sense? They agree, and that's what counts. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.